Hello, Apostle. Hello. How did the fall of man affect his ability to relate well in marriage and relationships? Okay, good question. How did the um, fall of man affect his ability to relate well, especially in, in marriage? Yes, uh, we can see that all, if not most, of man's problem can be traced back to the fall his insufficiencies and his inability to conquer and to walk in dominion can be traced back to the fall because what happened at the fall is that his makeup and DNA was corrupted with sin and iniquity. He was not able to love the way God loves and he was not able to govern and become a good steward as God had expected him to do. So in marriage, even God himself told them that the woman will have um, a lot of uh, desire to manipulate the man to control him and the man will also want to dominate his wife. So that is a part, uh, God was not really cursing them but he was explaining to them how they are going to relate because of the fall of man. So, and God also helped them by asking them four important questions and if you go through the four questions we are able to understand and also self-correct because now we have Jesus we have an option of uh, living victoriously the first question that God asked Adam and Eve is where are you so Adam fell by choice and we also have a choice to arise because the blessings of God are specific to the location of the place called the place of obedience, the place of the of uh, the spirit. Because there are two options: you can either be carnal or spiritual. So in marriage, you need to ask yourself every time, where are you? Where are you operating from? So the people who are sinful are operating from this flesh from a sinful nature and selfishness and because of that they find a lot of failure in their marriage bible says that where do the strive and the conflict come about is because the people are carnal they are in the flesh so always ask yourself where are you are you operating in the spirit or in the flesh so even though adam fell we have a choice to walk in the spirit to be in the place of God, God has allocated for us so that you do not fall, uh, so that you do not uh, walk in the flesh and fulfill the desires of the flesh. Bible says to be carnally minded is death. Anything you do in the flesh will result in death. Anything we do in the spirit will result in peace and love. So always as a couple, make sure that you are in the spirit always by being prayerful and reading the word. This takes us to the next question that God asked them, who told you? Because in marriage, if you do not go for counseling, if you do not read the Bible, if you do not renew your mind and uh, listen to God always, you will be weak and uh, the enemy will come with deception and he will lie to you and you're going to fail. Ensure that you are always listening to the word of God. Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by on every word that proceeds from God. For your life to live, for you to be victorious, you always have to be hearing from God. Don't listen to the devil, but listen to God. You are who what God says that you are. If God's word says you are a victor, then you are a victor. You must believe what God says. You must obey what God tells you. The, la the third question that God asked them is, have you eaten of the forbidden fruit? Meaning that are you walking in rebellion? So in marriage, if you are uh, listening to the devil and also doing the ways of the devil, you are going to end in failure because a marriage that is full of um, rebellion, all the activities you do have a consequence of either success or failure. Anything we do in life, wherever we are, every situation we find ourselves in is because of our actions. So if you continue eating the forbidden fruit, doing the wrong things, 
then it will compromise your makeup and it will make you to continue to die. So avoid any appearance of sin. Avoid doing things that are evil in your life, in your relationships, to ensure that you get the results of God. Because we are a direct consequence of our actions. Bad actions like uh, the um, criticism, contempt, stonewalling, and um, all the negative ways of um, relating with each other are not allowed in marriage. Anytime you do those things, they will result in failure and disappointment. Now, there's the last question that God asked them. Uh, God especially asked Eve that have you, what is this that you have done? Meaning that do you understand the implication of your actions? Because Eve just thought that she was just enjoying herself with the fruits or she, she did not understand that she was now condemning the whole human race into judgment, into pain, into suffering. Anything you do, you must understand the weight and of the consequences. Many people do not understand that anything they are doing has a direct impact on their marriage, on their life, and because of that, they continue wallowing in sin and doing things in rebellion that result in their failure. So, because Jesus has given us the option to and the liberty, we can now walk in the ways of righteousness. You can walk in the ways of wisdom and become successful and uh, victorious. So you don't have to be a victim of the fall, but you can purpose to be renewed. Like when Nicodemus comes to see Jesus and tells him that, that nobody can do the things you do unless God is with him. And Jesus tells him that you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of heaven. Meaning that if you are going to succeed in your life and especially in marriage and relationships, you must be born again. You mu your mind must be renewed. You must think like God. You must leave the corridors of disobedience and then begin to think in a kingdom way. Become a kingdom citizen. Then you are going to experience the success that Jesus experiences.